All right. So as we get nearer the end of our refined painting layer, We can try zooming in at different amounts because what I'm trying to avoid is anything that looks too much like just pixels stacked on top of each other. And I might even use the smudge tool a little bit <coughs> to soften some of these edges so they just don't look like pixels layered up on top of each other. Kind of push them around a little. Especially in the mid mid tones, in the deep shadows, and then I can see where I need more darks. <laughs> yeah, remember to submit one that can get full credit, full three out of three points. This is the last project graded by me. This isn't about everything being perfect. This is about you being able to demonstrate you understand the, the principles behind digital painting so that you've been introduced to it so that you can use it on your own for your final project if you want to because it's this we're doing it in a pretty purest way here where we're doing everything by just making our own pixels using our own brush right but the way digital painting is used professionally is along with other methods. So this is the way you would touch up composites. This is the way you would clean up digital coloring, even vector work, poster layouts. You know, you can always touch them up by digitally painting right on top and adjusting things. Again, it's just like everything about understanding your layers and understanding now the new skill is understanding brush settings, right? And these kind of dynamics to get the effect you want. Now there are a lot of more advanced techniques in digital painting. There are more advanced tools. One that's really cool is the mixer brush, which you can set to, to match pixels that are underneath you know, and you can use it to blend and it will actually change colors as you go. And it will kind of mix them. So we're just learning the basics, right? But I'll show you a little bit of what this mixer brush does. Wherever I click first, it picks up the paint from those pixels. And then it carries it over into the other colors. So it doesn't look very different than what I have been doing, except I'm not using option anymore to steal colors. Instead, it automat automatically picks up the color from where I click, right? And it's all best based on these settings. So if you want to play with some of these more advanced tools, you certainly can, but I want you to try to understand them as you do it. And that's the trickier thing. And for my cat, with that kind of texture and paint film, it's just a lot of A lot of building up of layers. Lots of it. If you feel the color is getting kind of too dead, you can throw in something a little more wild. And I like to do this in traditional painting too, like throw some messy things in that then you have to go clean up because that helps you address those areas that maybe you've been ignoring a little bit. Throw some fluorescent greens in. Now I've got to go clean those up.
And again, I'm not trying to paint with solid black or solid white. You can always see there's a little bit of color in my selections. They're called chromatic grays. And then even in something as dark as my cat, you can see there's areas where it's darker and big. And areas, oh, how did I lose that? Areas where it's, it's lighter. So lighter there, darker here, lighter here. These are the mid-tones, lighter here. So that can help give you the variation you need. And if your photo reference isn't doing it for you, you can always go to tools and adjust the color and play with your levels so that you can see those variations more clearly, like there. You want to treat the edges as well. What I like about doing animals is the fur makes it really obvious kind of the direction your, your paint strokes should go in. So as I'm doing the back here, this kind of choppy directional fur. And then when you get to the edges, this is now the first time instead of just painting with another color, you know, to get this edge, I'm going to start erasing. I can use my eraser at a pretty high opacity, and I can set that to be pressure sensitive too with my ship shape dynamics. And I can play with its angle just like I do with the brush so that I can kind of carve it out. <coughs> at the edge if I ever go too far. Okay, so now we're getting to close to the finish or at least the finish that we have time for with this assignment. Those fluorescent greens, those, those oranges, they get me to visit these areas a little bit more clearly. Just got to keep that energy up. And once we've got the paint down, then we can use dodge and burn. We can use adjustments. There's a whole lot we can do to, to keep playing with it. But we got to get all those paint layers down first. Until it all feels like it's at the same level of finish. Almost there, almost there. I'm going to start working at a slightly lower opacity. Yeah, and that's that's looking better.
And if you're digitally painting right, you're going to be exhausted after 15 minutes of painting. Not just from your, your wrist moving so much, but from like the amount of visual focus you're giving to it. It just takes a lot of mental energy. Similar to when you do, for those of you who have life drawing from a model, they only pose for like maybe 15 minutes, but you're trying to do so much in that time, capture so much, look for so much. And that's, that's the kind of energy you need to bring to digital painting to keep it productive. Now, what are the advantages of it on, instead of traditional painting, it's that it's so much cleaner. <laughs> and you have unlimited number of colors to use without having to pay for them, without having to clean up the paint after, or wash your brushes. My traditional paintings get cat hair in them all the time. Ironically, this one won't have any cat hair in it at all. It's nice and clean and digital. Disadvantages, well, that goes to question of the day number four, is that I can make <coughs> lots and lots of reproductions of this painting, but there is no original discrete work of art. So it's easy to question the value of it compared to a traditional painting of a cat. Because digital art's so easy to copy. And I could feed this image into an AI generator, like I did for some of my references, right? And it can give me variations on my own painting. But it, it will do it in seconds when it, it took me hours to make the painting, right? But those variations might turn out and be just as interesting as, as what I created. It's a varied and confusing world right now. Okay, now, I think I'm pretty much there. Looking, I'm going to turn off my reference. I'm going to see if there's any area that just looks less finished than any other. I'm going to unlock my base color layer because I can also use my eraser brush on that now and kind of clean up around the edges. And then that shows me where I can fill in with some paint. <clears throat> And now this is my favorite part. Once I think I've done with my refined painting, then I save it. And that's a perfectly serviceable project right there. It should look good on white. It should look good on gray. It should look good on black. Okay. So saved, perfectly fine. Now I like to do this. I like to make a duplicate of my refined paint layer and my base color and then lock them again the originals, and then I like to play with my adjustments and the hue saturation and really push them in different directions. So this is just my refined paint. Let's push it towards here and more saturated and maybe brighter. Maybe take, I don't like those greens, so maybe take those. That would probably be the cyans. Yeah, let's push them a different color. There we go. Just kind of play with them so I have an alternate. So that's what I had before. This is what I have now. And then maybe play with them with a different blending mode, right? See what's interesting. Soft light, maybe. <coughs> maybe.